Hi, this is Doug Gosen, and in this video, I want to show you how to build a no-show chart, which is an important tool that you can use when planning your lessons. In fact, it kind of comes first in the whole lesson planning because what a no-show chart does is it's when you take the standard and you figure out what is it that the student needs to know and how can they show that they know this. Now, how does that help you? Well, it helps you keep aligned with the standard. It also helps with the rigor. So when you're creating work for them to do. You know it matches how the students will be assessed. It helps with the lesson planning and it's early in the process. In fact, it's one of the first thing you should do when you're lesson planning so that you know that everything else you create for that lesson fits into what the students need to know and how they can show it. And then also when you're creating formative and summative assessments, you can use your no-show chart in order to determine what questions you should include and which ones you don't need to have. So let's talk about this process. First of all, there's some materials you're going to need. You're going to need, of course, the TEKS in order to know what the standard is. IQ analysis is also helpful in this. And then other materials like the field guide, which is a helpful process resource that will give you information that you can use when creating your no-show chart. You may have for other subjects, other resources that you can pull from in order to help create this no-show chart. So now let me take you through this process. So you've got your no-show chart page and you've got your standard there. And so for example here, we're going to work our way through a fourth grade math critique here. So we've got to compare two fractions with different numerators and different denominators and represent the comparisons using the symbols greater than, equal, or less than. Okay, so first thing I need to do is I'm going to put my teak up on my no-show chart so that when I save this and I come back to it at a later time, I know which teak it had to do with. Now I'm going to take a look at the nouns and the nouns are going to help me figure out what the students need to know. From this fraction, numerator, denominator, and the symbols there, I know that a fraction, the students need to know a fraction is part of a whole. They need to know that the top digit is the numerator, and they need to know that the bottom digit is the denominator, represents the whole, okay? They also need to know those symbols and what they mean, the, you know, bigger, smaller, equal, okay? They need to know all of that. All right, next time I'm moving to my field guide. My field guide is going to add to that information. In my field guide, I find that the students also need to know how to find the common denominator and how to find the lowest common denominator. The field guide helps me understand that. And then also how to use benchmark fractions when comparing fractions. And I get all of that from my field guide. Okay. And then there's a the vocabulary that I need to make sure I include while I'm teaching this lesson because the students are going to see this vocabulary come up. Okay. Next, I look at the IQ analysis, which are the um, uh, star questions that they've had in the past. And I look at these IQ analysis questions and I add to my note. What else do the students need to know? They need to know how to compare two fractions at a time when presented with more than two fractions. Okay. They also need to know how to create fractions from models. And I get both of those from the pictures that I see in that IQ analysis. Now, I've worked my way through and I've got everything that students need to know. Now let's look at how they're going to show that they know that. Well, I'm going to look at the verbs. They need to compare, re uh, represent, and then using the symbols. So, you know, when given two fractions with different numerators and denominators, students need to be able to determine which one is greater. Um, than the other and if they're equal. Okay, so they need to be able to do that. They need to be able to, when comparing fractions, using use the correct symbols, you know, to represent that comparisons. They need to be able to do that. When I jump to back to that field guide, I also find that students need to compare fractions using a variety of ways, pictures, number lines, concrete object, objects. So that's the uh, field guide helps me with that information. And then once again, jump back to the IQ analysis. I'm looking at the type of questions that they have there. And I also find that they need to have pictures in which they're going to have to figure out what fraction is represented there before they do the comparisons. And they also, if given more than two fractions, they need to know and be able to um, take two fractions at a time and compare them in order to determine three fractions. Okay. And all of that is given to me by working through my resources. Another thing you could look at on that um, document here is look at the common mistakes that students often make. And then you can address those beforehand, still waiting until after they test to address them. 
Okay, so that's the no-show chart. That's my completed no-show chart. At this point, I am know what the students need to know, and I know how they need to show it, and I am ready to start developing my assessments, start developing my lessons, start developing the activities that the students are going to do during my lesson. All right, that's the no-show chart.